good. Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Central Planning Board meeting. My name is Mark Marzula. I'm the chairman of the planning board. I'm going to start with a roll call of the town board team members for the planning board. And we'll start with Joe Recito. Present. Chuck Abbey. Present. John Snyder. Present. Don Bloss. Here. Mike Marizio. Here. Planning board clerk, Cindy Chamberlain. Here. There you go. <laughs> Director of Codes Enforcement, Steve Procopio. Here. Engineer for the Planning Board, Mark Parrish. Here. Attorney for the Planning Board, Neil Germain. Here. Town Board member in the liaison of the Planning Board, Nancy White. Here. And Town Board member, Judy Boyke. Here. Thank you. As is always the case, the Planning Board will accept public comment on any active application that's currently before the board due to the fact that this meeting is being conducted virtually. Anybody wishing to submit comment should do so in writing by email, fax, or postal service. And that information, as far as contact information, can be found on the town website. With that, Mr. Marizio, would you lead us off with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty justice, and justice for all. Thank you. Next item will be the approval of the January 6th meeting minutes. Any questions or comments? We have a motion for approval by uh, as printed. Motion for approval by Mr. Snyder. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bloss. Mr. Mr. Recito. Yes. Mr. Abbey. Yes. Mr. Snyder. Yes. Mr. Bloss. Yes. And I vote yes. The motion to approve the minutes has carried. We'll move on to the first item on the agenda. This is for. Premier Southern Autos, the property at 5655 East Taft Road. This is a proposed auto sale. This is uh, second time back, I believe. Tom? Good evening. Yes, this is the second time back. Good evening. And your dad, Stephen, good evening. If you could uh, put up your revised site plan and kind of go over the changes, that would be terrific. Are we putting it up? Um, Yes. All right, let me just share the screen real quick. All right, can everybody see that? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Just one correction. Uh, the screen shows Stephen Gasparini. I'm actually Gary Gasparini again, using, I'm on vacation still, and I'm using my son's uh, computer and his technical ability because uh, not very good with this type of stuff. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, we submitted the new plan, uh, which you all have in front of you. Uh, We've outlined where the cars are going to be. Uh, the space allotment's nine foot wide. Uh, and we show 51 display cars uh, going around the perimeter. Uh, for the uh, parking, we've allotted eight spots plus one van handicap. Uh, due to the type of business we are, there's not a high consumer volume on this type of a business. Uh, so Four employees would be, uh, you know, drastic amount or pretty good amount for us. And four customers there all at once would be pretty heavy, I think, traffic also. So we, we were comfortable with that as being plenty of parking spaces uh, for the customers. And naturally, we probably might not have a full lot of time. So there is spaces um, that could be kind of taken away from our display area if needed. Um, 
uh, I think we, we now show that we have, there is three lights. The, the surveyor missed one of them in his takeoff, but there is three existing lights. We are going to replace them with all new LED at 90 degree angles. Um, again, no grading changes, no utility changes. Uh, and um, I, I, I think that pretty much covers uh, all of our updates. Um, and, um, unless you have more, naturally what questions you have. You're all set? Y yes, I'm all set. Okay, thank you. We'll go through questions. Mr. Racido, anything? No, I don't have anything. Thank you. Mr. Abbey? Uh, just double check. Uh, the perimeters that are being shown right now, is that uh, presently uh, paved? In the condition we're totally in right now. Uh, everything that is shown there is presently paved. Uh, okay. Naturally, our goal is to uh, clean it up and reseal it, uh, do some minor crack repair, uh, but that is all presently paved. It's not being uh, expanded. Because okay, uh, you know, we require uh, pavement under uh, display vehicles uh, in the town. So that's great. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Like, like you say, the car uh, hats in you know, poor shape now, but we'd be bringing that back up to snuff. Um, I noticed that in the half roadside, there's a chain link you have proposed. The chain link's existing. Oh, it's there already. Okay. Yes. Ready? Okay, I'm all set for now. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Mr. Snyder? I like what what I see. I have uh, no other questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Bloss. No questions <laughs> at this time. Looks good. Glad they're using it. I have no further questions, Mr. Marizio. No further questions. Uh, like everyone else, I like what I see. Mr. Procopio. I am all set. Thank you, Mr. Parrish. Uh, also here. Also. Thank you, Mr. Germain. All set. Joe, would you propose the standard seeker? Yes, I propose the standard seeker, and that's a form of motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Abbey. Mr. Rosito? Yes. Mr. Abbey? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Bloss? Yes. And I vote yes. The seeker passes. Neil, would you prepare a motion for approval? Yes. You're going to move for the adoption of a resolution approving the application known as Gary G. Gasparini, Premier Autos, 5655 East Half Road, proposed auto sales. This approval is strictly conditioned on the following one, the color schemes and renderings and or elevation as presented by the applicant to the planning board in regard to the application shall be incorporated by reference into the site plan and the board's approval thereof. Accordingly, the actual project must substantially conform to the items as presented herein. Would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Mr. Racido? Yes. Mr. Abbey? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Moss? Yes. And I vote yes. Motion carries. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next item on the agenda is for a zone change recommendation to the town board. This is Leslie Ann Associates, property at Lakeshore Road. This is the requesting agriculture from existing to from agricultural to residential R12. And I New Zealand Romans is representing the applicant. Mr. Bregman, I see you're with him. I am, unfortunately. Good evening. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, thank you very much for considering this application. As you know, it's a 64 acre piece of property in the vicinity of Mud Mill Road and Whiting Road. Wellington Meadow is to the east in our 10 community and Elvin Meadow is to the west in our 12 community. You know, I've got to tell you that this was, this has been a 55 year journey to the filing of this application. Back in, uh, 1965, when I had the honor, and it was an honor to be elected to the Cicero Town Board, 
one of the first people that I came in contact with was Agnes Horner, who was in the town clerk's office. And uh, I soon or very quickly came to admire her. She loved her town, but she also loved the acreage that she and her family had, had moved on to in, uh, in 1920. And she was so proud of the heritage that was associated with that family. And, and many of you, I'm sure, uh, know of or know about the, the Horner property uh, or, the, or the Horner family, I should say. Uh, in 1986, when uh, my family started or established uh, the Bragman Companies, which is a subdivision development uh, company, uh, I, I kind of knew what would the response would be, but the first one I called was Gladys and asked if uh, she would be willing to consider the sale of her property. And of course she wasn't, uh, we, we were great friends, but again, I'm so proud of uh, the fact that they, you know, if, if we're now and the only ones on the property right now are Horners, but it would be over a hundred years that they had lived on that property. And uh, so she uh, kindly declined. Uh, about a year ago, uh, I was pleasantly surprised when Bob Horner had contacted me. And he said that um, the family thought, of course, Ag Agnes was uh, gone and, and Carl, uh, uh, one of the brothers was gone, but they wondered if we would consider uh, putting in an offer for, for the property. We talked about the fact that they were aware that we have a trademark with our developments. The trademark is that we do the best we can to protect any environmental uniqueness and to preserve any historic heritage that would be associated with the property. And that's exactly what they were looking for. They were familiar with projects we had done in Zisro, uh, the pastures, uh, the crossings, uh, Champlain at the lake and, and so on. And that has been the trademark with the almost 2000 home sites that we have developed. So we, we got very excited very quickly and we were talking about the fact that of course, when we preserve the, the history of a community, we, we talk about the people and the, uh, and the events and, uh, and anything else associated with that property. And we try to preserve it with signage, whether it's the name of the project or or the roads within the project or other green space in the project so that future generations will understand what has brought about uh, the development of that area and, uh, and how they could benefit from it. So we have been excited about that, but we're also excited about the fact that the uniqueness of the property would, would allow us, would encourage us to have a variety of, uh, of types of home sites and then the result in the homes that, that would come from that. Um, we, we think that uh, uh, the property which we're asking for in our 12 application tonight, and many of the uh, home sites are, are significantly larger than the R12. Uh, so there could be smaller lots, there could be significantly larger lots, and that's the case for many of them. There is a wooded area where there are large home sites. And so we think that when we talk about a variety of opportunities there, that it could be for people at, at, at various levels in, in their home building uh, lives. But at the same time, uh, when we talk about the uh, fact that uh, homes would probably start at $300,000 there, they could go far higher. And uh, it would just be a great opportunity for so many people in and around Cicero or, or further on. Now, at this point, Mr. Chairman, if it's all right with uh, you, I would turn the more technical part of the presentation over to, to Hale Romans, and uh, I'm hopeful that we can answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much for allowing us to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Hale, you're there? Yes, how are you? Hi, Al. Good, thank you. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Good. I'm glad everybody's doing okay. Um, mm. Looking at the map up on the screen here, you can see Lakeshore Road is on the north. On the west is Eldon Meadows, which is R12. On the south is Joseph's Landing, which is also R12. It's way to the end there. And on the east is Wallington Meadows, which is R10. And what we're asking for is R R12 zoning. So that means that the smallest lot will be 12,000 square feet. And you can see by the plan that there are uh, quite a few lots that are actually 
<clears throat> larger than and sometimes even two or three times more than 12,000 square feet. The access points that we would utilize are the two existing access points coming out of Alden Meadows. There are no access points going to the east into Wellington Meadows. That subdivision is um, all approved and filed. There was no, uh, there were no interconnection points that were uh, designated as part of that subdivision. The main access point would come in off of Lakeshore Road. So we've had uh, GTS engineering, <clears throat> which is Gordon Stansbury do a traffic study. And that was submitted to the town and a copy was also submitted to New York State DOT and County DOT for their review and approval. <clears throat> the, the conclusions out of that traffic study basically say that the access point onto Lakeshore Road has sufficient um, stopping site distance. <clears throat> there are sufficient gaps within the traffic there that uh, the traffic coming out of the subdivision, even with the interconnects into um, Elden Meadow, would not have a problem accessing onto Lakeshore Road. It did say that there are existing um, <clears throat> delays at the Lakeshore Road and Route 31 intersection that <clears throat> what they did was is they took into account that um, during COVID, they added an additional, I believe 25 to 30% in traffic and then they upped it for the summer um, peak to show that there would be still those delays there and they might be slightly affected by this, but there would be no mitigation at this point, as far as our engineer says, obviously we'd have to wait for state DOT and county DOT to finish their review to ensure that there, um, if there are any mitigation measures that have to be taken on, that we are aware of it. So this project has <clears throat> the three interconnection points. It's it's almost what we would consider to be a, a classic infill site. And the fact that the property to the west is already developed as residential, the property to the south is residential, and the property to the east is residential. So from a county planning standpoint, this is what we would call a, a, an infill development site. We've checked with Aquap to see if there was capacity in the, in the uh, county sewer system, and there is. And obviously we would uh, be bringing a design engineer on board to look at um, specific uh, sewer capacity with the uh, town system. But right now there is sanitary sewer on Lakeshore Road and there is also two manholes at the Stub Streets um, coming out of Alden Meadow. We do have wetlands that are shown on this map here. These wetlands were flagged by Delta Engineering. And you can see the wetlands to the west of the proposed entrance road and to the east of the proposed entrance road. And then if you look farther south to the project, we have a wetland that bisects the property and we have a cul-de-sac that crosses it. Our total impact with this layout would be less than a tenth of an acre, which means we would still have to do a nationwide wetland permit, but because the impact is less than a tenth of an acre, we probably will not have to do any mitigation. This plan, if we get the zone change and we go through subdivision, would obviously have to be altered for stormwater um, management facilities that would be provided on site. Therefore, this plan that shows 120 residential lots, we think that probably the actual number of lots may drop by five to 10 lots, depending on what's needed for stormwater management. Uh, there is obviously water, public water in um, Elden Meadows, and there's public water out mm -hmm. on Shore Road. If uh, anybody on the board has any questions at this point. Um, thank you, Hal. Thank Let you. me just mention a couple of things, and then we'll get into the questions. The uh, Onondaga County Planning Board did do a, re a review. They state that there's no significant adverse intercommunity or countywide implication. We did have a few comments that would be addressed if the sub if the zone change is approved and it goes into subdivision. Um, the town did receive a number of letters from residents in the area, talking about some concerns that they have. I think there were eight letters in all. And I just made some notes, kind of put them all together and just wanted to go through those for the record. Uh, number of residents talked about the infrastructure, traffic, drainage, uh, long range plan 
and strategy for the town, environmental concerns, anywhere from global warming to the wildlife that's in the area, overcrowded schools that I have not heard, and, uh, and then connection into the Alvin Meadows from the, uh, the streets there and the additional traffic. Um, so with that, I will open it up to questions. So we'll start with Mr. Rosito. Um, yes, I saw a couple of letters too from some concerned citizens um, about traffic. I mean, do they do they have uh, copies of uh, the traffic studies and things like that? Do they, or do they have to hear it from us? Because it didn't seem like it from there, but their concerns were just what you said. Uh, you know, it's I thought it was forever wild. Uh, excessive traffic is going to be added to Lakeshore and the surrounding areas, uh, wildlife, um, historic preservation, because uh, it's near uh, some sites, apparently. At least that's one of the comments that I saw. I don't know if that's something that has to be looked into or not. Um, so as far as the traffic study, the, the residents don't have that. No, that's not online or anything. But the traffic study basically said there's no significant impact. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right a couple of people mentioned the fact that they back up to the woods now and it's nice and they were told when they bought their homes that it would be forever wild but that they really i mean they would have to take that up with whoever told them that you know what i mean it doesn't tie the property owner up because somebody gave them some bad information i know it seems like it keeps coming up every time there's development you know and it's like um you know who has to is stand by, you know, is it verbiage? Is it documented? You know, mm -hmm. I don't know clearly, but, but you know, some of these people, um, when they comment, it sounds like they may have some, uh, I don't know, legitimacy, but I, I don't, I don't know personally. I would probably defer to Neil, but that's probably, they should probably check with their attorney and whoever told them that, you know, it was a while ago as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You know, I have kind of a, a unique perspective with this. I look pretty close by. There's a there's a little trail off of South Bay Road that goes through the woods and it comes out on this this property here that's a cornfield in the summer. And I walk my dog through it and I enjoy that. And so does my dog. But does that give me the right to tell this property owner they can't do anything with it? I don't think so. But you know what I mean? If if I wanted to be able to continue to do that, then I need to buy it. It's an American, they have a right to use their property. But I think there's other, some other legitimate question. You know, were you going to say something? Yeah, when, I think it, you're, when you're talking about people relying on a, on a claim of forever wild, if that is a covenant that runs with the land, they would certainly be free to enforce it. I doubt it very much that this landowner got this far to find it hasn't vetted that question themselves and is spending this kind of money on this kind of application without first knowing that they can actually build on that property. Thank you. Joe, anything else? Uh, not at the moment. Mr. Abbey? Uh, yes, I, I think this development would be a, a natural good fit for the area there with the residential on both sides and side. Just having an extension of that uh, and the, uh, Know that uh, uh, Mike and his company uh, always treat their developments with uh, historical value and, uh, and really do do the very best on development. So there's no questions there whatsoever. And I look forward to you know seeing more information on it. It uh, looks pretty good to me. And, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Mr. Snyder. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm wondering. Uh, I'm concerned about the access to the neighborhood uh, and the access through the neighborhood, Eldon Meadows. Uh, I was looking at the drawing the other day. Um, there appeared, and, that, and this may not be true now today, but there were a few lots that were not built on in the development um, to the east. And if that were true then we could uh, have a road um, from the uh, development uh, into the adjacent development, which would then get them to um, Whiting Road, which would get them to 
South Bay, which would help with that uh, situation with the traffic. I just find it interesting that as we continue to look at these developments, um, we looked at a big one on um, at um, um, the apartments that were going to go in the Lakeshore Marina, uh, the ones that were going to be um, uh, down uh, in uh, in the farm lot down at the end of Lakeshore, and every the, the, they always come back with we have uh, plenty of capacity or we have enough capacity. Um, I know I personally have had to wait at Lakeshore and 31 um, for um, probably five minutes has been my longest, but uh, heading to work, which I thank God don't have to do anymore. Uh, I'm concerned about uh, the fact that we haven't got a solution to the 3181 traffic problem yet. Supposedly the state's working on that. And I'm just a little concerned as we continue to dump more and more traffic onto Lake Shore um, that um, we don't have a solution for when we get to uh, Lake Shore and th uh, 31 uh, or get to 81 and 31. So uh, I'm just wondering if. Uh, if now is the right time to look at this one. Well, I think you bring up a good point, Darren, with, with the traffic issue. Um, it, you know, especially when you get up to Route 11 and Chick-fil-A. How many times have we heard stories about that area? And I think the town board really needs to look at the overall picture, right? The big scheme of things and where we go and what we do, because you're right. When, when you look at the traffic study here, it says it's minimal impact. And I've said this before, and then you look at another one and it's minimal impact. But if you combine 10 of these projects together, all of these minimum yeah. will start creating an effect at these intersections that are already a little bit stressed. Absolutely. So I think that is definitely something that the town board needs to look at. You know, that's, that's out of our realm. And the, the connections into the existing subdivision, that kind of stuff, good questions now, but that kind of stuff would be addressed during the site plan if you get to that point. And we put those paper streets in purposely because cross, cross connections typically we enjoy, we like them. It helps keep traffic off the main streets. So um, right. that will be interesting to look at if, if it gets to that point. The other thing that I have a concern about um, having dealt with the highway people for uh, four or five years building their new building, I know that one of their uh, common headaches is cul-de-sacs and the plowing and uh, cleaning of the cul-de-sacs. And I'm just uh, hoping that when we, uh, if this were to be approved, when we get into the uh, site plan, that maybe there's a way to get those two cul-de-sacs to be eliminated and have that be a loop road uh, and that may help with uh, uh, traffic uh, also. Yeah, and if we get to that point, we will get this over to the highway for their review and their comment. Right. I'm good for now. Thank you. Mr. Bloss. Um, I, I'm going to start out with uh, a question, Mark, and then I have a couple of comments. Um, since many people in the town are affected by the traffic, not just the adjoining property, is there, I'm, I got a quick, you know, I'm concerned that everybody know what's going on. Um, is there any way to put a hold on that, on the meeting until we could have it live in person at the town hall? I would, I would like that myself. Oh, okay. Well, that's I'm, that. That's I'm, not, I, I'm not in favor of that. Oh, I, mean, well, that, that, I, I had to ask. I'm definitely looking forward to the day that we can get back to live meetings. I think we all are. Yes. But okay. I hate to stop the activity in town because of this pandemic. I, from my perspective, when we do go back live, I want to continue doing this kind of thing so that people can view at home. You know, they yes. can participate in this meeting from home. It's actually easier for them at their leisure because it's recorded on YouTube. And then they have a, a week, if we do a public hearing, 
to submit their or two weeks to submit their comment. So I'm not sure that we lose much by doing the meetings with Zoom and to put a pause on things because of this, I don't think is good for the community. I, okay, they, then my reasoning behind that was that, um, you know, in the past, if we had, you know, uh, an issue like this come up, uh, we, we usually got a pretty good turnout, but, you know, in real live time. <clears throat> um, that, and now, that's now, wait a minute, I'm just one person, so. Yes. We, we have five, five votes here. And the town board, you know, correct me, they, yeah, if, if, if I might weigh in here, no. not that I'm going to, I don't get a vote, but our role in this is to provide a recommendation to the town board and to do the secret determination. The town board will hold the public hearing. So, and a lot of things that we've done in the past where it's controversial, even though we're not required to have a public hearing, we have done it. But on those issues, on, on those issues, that was because the town board doesn't have the public hearing. And in this case, there will be a public hearing conducted at the town level. Yeah, thank you. That was my point. And, and like I mentioned in the beginning of the meeting, we always accept public comment and we received, I think eight of them. All the board members got it. It, it was also given to the town board members, all the comments that have come in so far. So- um, uh, Don Snyder, um, are we, are we saying that we will uh, probably not vote on this tonight uh, for a recommendation, but let people uh, for the next two weeks that uh, listen to the meeting or can look at the meeting, uh, give us some response so uh, we can uh, be a little more informed with what the community is uh, thinking about? Well, if, if I may, procedurally, we were asked to act as the... Um, lead agency. Those lead agency notices went out within the last week and they allow uh, related agencies to give us comment back or, or object to our declaration of lead agency 30 days is what we give them. Right. So we're not at that stage yet anyways. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mark. Yes. Uh, the other, the other thing that, uh, a comment on the traffic study on the accuracy. Um, I know they said they gave it a, there was a, a number in there for COVID in that. Well, there's the traffic not, there's the traffic that's been eliminated by the schools that normally travel the Lakeshore 31 and all of that. And there's a high unemployment rate. So those people aren't driving uh, during the hours. I did read the traffic report cover to cover. It's about as exciting as watching paint dry. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, another comment on the cat's paw area traffic and farm gate, did their letters inform them of the same things as the uh, east side or the west side of this project? Did Say they get again? the same, did they get the same letter as, as the other people? We did, we did not send out letters. Well, somebody did. I don't know. I don't know who we did not. Well, we don't have a public hearing schedule. We only do that when there's a public we, hearing schedule. It sent, sent the notifications out. Okay. The, yeah. Okay. The notifications, it, uh, excuse my terminology there, but they got this both parties on, e, on the East and West side got the same letter. And on the South. Who's talking? Hal Romans. And it would be the same on the south. So we gave them a list of all the adjacent owners to the west, east, and south so that they can send out notifications. Yeah, you gave those to who? As part of our application to the town. But the town. I don't know that the town has sent letters out yet. Steve, do you know? Yeah, those 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 letters have not gone out yet. So oh, I think okay. this is just, uh, people just, yeah, people have just heard about this. I think there's some, uh, uh, I forget the uh, next door uh, app and stuff like that. People are hearing things on. Yeah, and it's published on our website because it's on our agenda. So Donald, we have the town has not sent out any notification letters. Yet. Okay, I'm going to go back and check, but I think I got a list of a list of names of everybody that lives around there, and I I took it that they were all notified. I could be wrong, but no, I'll that check would, it. It would be done for the public hearing that the town board will conduct. 
Um, okay, the last comment I got here is um, on the, the water system and everything like that, I'm sure that's all got to be approved before uh, it has to go to Onondaga County. Now, I know from experience that uh, we need, we re require a certain amount of flow, pressure and gallons. And if there's an additional cost, who will bear that cost? Now, being involved for five years when that highway project, um, and I think Mr. Snyder can verify this as well as me, that um, because of the pressure, we had to go to an auxiliary pump within that building just to meet fire code protection uh, codes. So who would bear the cost of that? Um, and the, the, if, it, if in fact that the sewerage, if they should need pumps of any kind to pump that sewerage, who would bear the cost of that? The, us or the uh, developer? That's the questions I got. Neil, do you have the answer? Did you say Neil or Hal? Neil or, or Hal, who's got the answer to that? Well, I'll, I'll give you my understanding of it. As far as water is concerned, if we get the zone change, then one of the things we do as part of the subdivision process is to contact Aqua to see how water would serve the site. Typically what they look for is being able to bring it in from one direction and out another direction. So we would be bringing the water in from out in Meadows and connecting into Lakeshore Road. And then they design it in such a way to make sure that we have the required flow necessary for the subdivision. If for any reason- The um, county is gonna do that? The county is paid by the developer to look at the water system and to design it. That's the way it always works with residential subdivision. Aqua wants to do their own design and then the developer pays the fee for that. That fee covers Aqua designing the system. <coughs> as far as sanitary sewer, we have uh, uh, county uh, sanitation and they say that there is capacity there, but as part of the subdivision process, we'd have to go through town approval for where we connect and how the sewers flow. We uh, don't anticipate a uh, on-site pump station for this project, but in the case that if you needed something like that, that would typically be something that the developer pays to install. So your question as to who bears the cost of, of these things to go through this, this analysis, it's the developer at the subdivision phase. Right now we're looking at does, <clears throat> does residential use in an R12 you know, R equals, you know, an R12 residential use for this property makes sense. And we believe that it does because you have R10 to the east, more dense than this, R12 to the south and R12 to the west. And obviously if, uh, if there was a flow issue on water, which typically we would see more in a, uh, a hilly or terrain where there's more change in elevation, in projects that we've done in the past, it was up to the developer to remedy that situation. Oh, just one quick question on the roads. They'll meet uh, Cicero town specs? Of course. Right from the get-go? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Don. Hal, was this always being presented as an R12? I thought R15 was being talked about at one point. No, we, we, we always looked at least my office has always looked at it as R12. And that's because we looked at it as the smallest lot will be 12,000 square feet. But there, there are actually a lot of lots that are more than 12,000 square feet. And uh, looking at the fact that, you know, we definitely didn't want to try for anything like R10. Um, obviously R10 works to the east there. That's what Wallington Meadows was zoned. Um, but R12 makes sense. Uh just as a clarification, the existing zoning is agricultural. That's correct. And agricultural has a number of uses on it. And I just want to point this out for the record, for the public mainly. So agricultural use is obviously allowable. One family dwelling is allowable, but the density is obviously different. You need a one acre lot. Private garages, uh, with site plan approval, a tourist home, a veterinary hospital, 
glory, aircraft landing is not gonna happen. The religious institutions, schools, outdoor recreation, stable, cemetery, enclosed storage, public utility structure, home occupation, accessory use. So those are all allowable uses under the existing zone. Just, I just wanted to point that out. I have no further questions at this point. Mr. Marizio. I, just a couple of things. I'm not sure, I, I can't tell uh, Mr. Bregman by the drawing. Do you intend on having the tree lines remain but up against the two existing neighborhoods? We are going to, we are, we are going to look at trying to do that. We know that there are existing uh, drainage easements, at least in um, Eldon Meadow within their property and parts of Wallington Meadow. Any drainage easements that we would do would be um, in our development. We would not access those backyard drainage swales. So we would okay. do that. And obviously the problem you have is, is usually that's where your drainage easements go. Sure, I, I can understand that. I just, you know, seeing the concerns that I've seen about the forever wild, having those existing tree lines stay uh, might alleviate some of that considering the majority of the properties already cleared out anyhow. I believe that some um, trees along the property lines could be uh, maintained. The problem is, is that we already know that in some of the Eldon Meadow properties, there's been um, there's been some people that have like a shed or fence that is already pushed beyond their property onto this property. So Perfect. trees that they think are at the edge of their property are, may in fact be 10 feet inside our property. So until we uh, get the zone change and actually do the topographic survey and, and see what we can actually do, we can't uh, guarantee anything, but we are looking at trying to do something. Uh, this is Mike Bradley. Okay. Additional comment. Sure. Yes. Okay. You know, I said in our in my initial presentation that we we pride ourselves on protecting uh, any uh, green space, any unique space, uh, and we have been a stickler, and I think that the record shows that. As Hale said, if we're looking at the at the um, at the buffer in Elden Meadow, for example, on the west side. Uh, anything that we can save there in the, in the way of trees or green space, unless because of the drainage or unless because of uh, a uh, directive from the engineers, we will save that green space. Uh, our, our projects in the, uh, in the pastures, our projects in the crossings, just a matter of record that we have gone in there and we've taken some extraordinary measures to make that happen. But as Hale said, or I think you said, until we have the engineers tell us what the drainage looks like, we're not able to sit here tonight and say, yes, we will do it for sure. That's how we got, that's how we get into, into uh, trouble, which we will, with uh, those who say, well, this will be forever green or, or the uh, tree buffers will uh, absolutely stay. We will take extraordinary measures if necessary to keep those buffers unless the drainage does not allow it. Sure, and I and I anticipated that was your that was going to be your response. I just wanted to make sure we were on the on the same page with trying to keep as much as possible. I know you've done that in the past, and and I really appreciate you you taking those measures. Um, the other thing I noticed on on Google Maps, there is an existing trail. It looks like that goes from the property down to South Bay Road. Is that something that's included in your property, or is that something that goes through a? a... No, I I actually think that uh, uh, this this property has been farmed uh, for in uh, recent years. And uh, the uh, farming is done by the owner of the adjacent property, I believe, and, I, and it's been used for more or less of a haul road, but that, that, that is not owned by us or not a part of this. Okay. Road. Just gonna say, if we could get an access point down to South Bay Road, I think that would alleviate some of the traffic concerns on Lakeshore. Uh, but overall, I don't, I don't see this project as being too uh, invasive, adding to our, our traffic problem that we all can agree we have, but uh, those were the only questions I had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Mr. Procopio, anything? No, I'm all set for now. Thanks. Mr. Parrish, any comments, questions? Uh, no, nothing here. Mr. Germain. Mr. 
Neil Germain, counselor. <laughs> uh, no, I'm all set. Okay. The applicant, any, any other questions or comments at this point? I do have a question. Um, Hal Romans here. Neil, as far as uh, waiting the 30 days for, uh, did you talk about earlier, are we saying that we wouldn't even be able to make a decision at the, or do a referral at the next meet, planning board meeting, it'd have to be the one after that? Well, the, it, this, the planning board is gonna have to make a secret determination on this because we're, we're gonna act as lead agency. Right. We sent out the things about in the last week, I believe, both of the, the, it was sent out. And so you really should wait the 30 days to make sure there's anybody else doesn't want to act that. But as far as us making a recommendation, a strict recommendation, plus or minus to the, um, to the town board, I suppose you could do it because it's not, um, you know, it's not a final, it's not a final action. So we're not bound by secret on that, although we are act, going to be acting as lead agency on the whole thing. I just, but you're, I, it's not going to slow you down if we don't if we don't do it tonight because we're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait out the thirty days anyways. The town board's going to have to. And that's what I just I just wanted that for clarification on her. That's all. It's not that we're trying to push it. We just I just wanted to have in my mind what what meeting we might be able to. CA recommendation from the planning board to the town board. Thank you. All right, that'll conclude this item on the agenda. We'll move on to the next. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next item is also a zone change recommendation. This is for property at Miller Road from agricultural to residential multifamily. Robert Abbott is the applicant's representative. Yes, yes. Good evening. Hello. You can display the map and kind of go through what you're looking to do. I would appreciate that. Um, I just, all I've got is a survey that I sent in. And That's fine. I'm not sure how I get that up on the screen. <laughs> Mark, can you put it up? Mr. Parrish? Uh, yeah, give me a second, I'll do it. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Um, Hybrid Street Properties LLC is the owner of the site. Uh, it's a 1.2 acre site, uh, agricultural zone. It's uh, on Miller Circle, just off Miller Road. The applicant would like to um, construct a single building uh, apartment. Um, the maximum we can get on here as per the, the zoning ordinance is, uh, is uh, 10 units. Uh, in a building, but I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't laid the building out yet. Uh, just did some preliminary math and it looks like it'll work with, you know, with the required parking. Um, if we don't get 10 units, we'll probably be eight units. Uh, it, it backs up to the, uh, on the south is the, um, the apartment complex, uh, Bayshore Apartments. There's, I don't know, 18 or 20 buildings back there that their, their property line abuts to the south line on this site. And um, she wishes to build this building as an investment property. Uh, and it would be similar in nature to the other buildings aesthetically. Uh, access to the site would probably end up being a single driveway off of Miller Circle. And when you come off of Miller Road uh, and you turn and you make that sweep to the left, the the first thing you hit would be this parcel. Uh, there are a couple of houses down at farther down Miller Circle, which really wouldn't be affected by the traffic um, of this project. 
And then directly across from this property, there's just a freestanding uh, garage uh, at, that, at that point, right across. And um, that's basically it. That's what she wishes to do. Thank you. We'll open up for questions, Mr. Rosito. No, I have nothing at this time. Mr. Abbey? I'm all set for now. Thank you. Mr. Snyder? Uh, I didn't get a chance to take a look at this, so I, I don't know the connecting streets and, and how we go. And, and I guess I'm, um, I'd sure like to see how the building might lay out on this piece of property um, before we uh, approve it for. It, it sure sounds like it would be okay, but I, I just would uh, like to have a little bit more information um, before we were to uh, make a judgment on this item. So you'd like to see a layout of the building on the, on the survey? Yes. That, yeah. Just so you know, Don, that Miller Circle, that's the road that, that ends at the 81 on-ramp. At where? The dead ends at the 81 on ramp. It, it's a dead end road, Miller Circle. You're even, you take, here we go. I'm going to get a map up. See where the uh, Mark's arrow is right there? Okay. That Miller Road, that Miller Circle stops right at the on ramp when you get 981 from Bartell Road. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. In south. Yep. Okay. So, and, and it will back up to the um, apartment homes that are shown down at the bottom. Correct. Yes. Okay. Can we zoom in a little bit? Thank you. Now, how does how does this property lay out on uh, with it? Can you with an arrow uh, just lay that out? Yeah, I, I can lay out. I can lay out a footprint. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but it's, it's it's very doable. This is the parcel right here. Yes. Okay, yeah, I see, yeah. So there is just a garage to the north and then and then to the east of it, there's a house. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm good. Thank you, Don. Mr. Bloss? Um, yes, I. Uh, what I did is I took a drive by. I pretty much knew where the property was and I looked at that and I only had two questions and he answered them. How many units and how many cars are they gonna be able to park there? But I think it's a perfect fit. It's, it's the right environment. It's the right everything, ready to go. Thank you, Don. Um, yeah, I took a ride by as well. Maybe when you do the layout of the building, you can kind of show what you would like to do for landscaping to buffer that house. Just so we have a feel for that. Here, I'll do a whole preliminary site plan layout showing parking, you know, the footprint of the building and proposed uh, uh, landscaping. Perfect. That's all I have, Mr. Marizio. No questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Procopio, anything? None. Thank you. Mr. Parrish, any comments? Uh, no, nothing. Mr. Germain? Uh, just a cautionary tale about zone change in general. So we're asking people to lay out stuff on, on the, the map and stuff like that. And that's great. But it doesn't mean that that's what it's going to be eventually. So once that zone's changed, the applicant could sell the property to somebody else or decide to come up with a different plan and hand it to you. So just bear that, bear that in mind that it's not, I'm not saying it's going to happen here, but it, that you're not approving a certain project on that property. Yeah, That's all that happened later. Yeah, very good point. And in fact, they don't even have to show anything other than they want a zone change. Correct. 
Good point. All right, that concludes the agenda items on the meeting and our agenda. Any questions or comments from the board? <coughs> nope. Nope. Nobody said. Did we, uh, did we get a uh, start movement on the uh, concern we have for uh, um, extending uh, a, uh, a plan? So the town, plan? Town board was gonna deal with that, hopefully the early part. Oh. Yeah, there's a public hearing schedule. Right, guys? Yeah, I just right got a here. reminder for that tonight. Yep. Yeah, they've scheduled a public hearing on it. Great. Good. So it's moving forward. Anybody else? Well, while I have everybody here, <laughs> so it, it looks like um, Mark, our chairman, has been asking for other people to make some of these, you know, um, motions. So I, I just want to remind everybody that when I finish reading a motion, any member of the board can say so moved and you would have moved that motion into the, onto the table. Somebody else can second it and then you can go for it. So you don't have to do every single one. So just bear in mind that any of you board members can say so moved if you want to move that motion. Yeah, in my reasoning for that is just to give you guys the opportunity to make those motions. I don't, I don't want to Hog every one of them. <laughs> I, yes, I, I yeah. So it's 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 easier than, than than many of you think. You just wait until I'm done talking and just say so move and second it if you, if you want to make it. And I'll ask if you would like to make a motion. Good point, Neil. Okay. If I could interject for just a second, uh, Mr. Snyder, the public hearing is set for February 10th on the uh, changing the wording on on that. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Nancy. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Go motion ahead. to adjourn. We're going to jump right in there. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> we have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Bloss, second by Mr. Racino. Meeting is adjourned.